Chapter 20 of the Practice and Science of Drawing. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Diana Schmidt. Materials. The materials in which the artist works are of the greatest importance in determining what qualities in the infinite complexity of nature he selects for expression and the good draughtsman will find out the particular ones that belong to whatever medium he selects for his drawing and be careful never to attempt more than it is capable of doing every material he works with possesses certain vital qualities peculiar to itself and it is his business to find out what these are and use them to the advantage of his drawing when one is working with say pen and ink the necessity for selecting only certain things is obvious enough. But when a medium with the vast capacity of oil paint is being used, the principle of its governing the nature of the work is more often lost sight of. So near can oil paint approach an actual illusion of natural appearances that much misdirected effort has been wasted on this object all enjoyment of the medium being subordinated to a meretricious attempt to deceive the eye and i believe a popular idea of the art of painting is that it exists chiefly to produce this deception no vital expression of nature can be achieved without the aid of the particular vitality possessed by the medium with which one is working if this is lost sight of and the eye is tricked into thinking that it is looking at real nature it is not a fine picture art is not a substitute for nature but an expression of feeling produced in the consciousness of the artist and intimately associated with the material through which it is expressed in his work inspired it may be in the first instance by something seen and expressed by him in painted symbols as true to nature as he can make them while keeping in tune to the emotional idea that prompted the work but never regarded by the fine artist as anything but painted symbols nevertheless never for one moment does he intend you to forget that it is a painted picture you are looking at however naturalistic the treatment his theme may demand in the earlier history of art it was not so necessary to insist on the limitations imposed by different mediums with their more limited knowledge of the phenomena of vision the early masters had not the same opportunities of going astray in this respect but now that the whole field of vision has been discovered and that the subtlest effects of light and atmosphere are capable of being represented it has become necessary to decide how far complete accuracy of representation will help the particular impression you may intend your picture or drawing to create the danger is that in producing a complete illustration of representation the particular vitality of your medium with all the expressive power it is capable of yielding may be lost perhaps the chief difference between the great masters of the past and many modern painters is the neglect of this principle they represented nature in terms of whatever medium they worked in and never overstepped this limitation modern artists particularly in the nineteenth century often attempted to copy nature the medium being subordinated to the attempt to make it look like the real thing in the same way the drawings of the great masters were drawings they did not attempt anything with a point that a point was not capable of expressing. The drawings of many modern artists are full of attempts to express tone and color effects, things entirely outside the true province of drawing. The small but infinitely important part of nature that pure drawing is capable of conveying has been neglected, and line work, until recently, went out of fashion in our schools there is something that makes for power in the limitations your materials impose many artists whose work in some of the more limited mediums is fine are utterly feeble when they attempt one with so few restrictions as oil paint if students could only be induced to impose more restraint upon themselves when they attempt so difficult a medium as paint it would be greatly to the advantage of their work 
beginning first with monochrome in three tones as expressed in a former chapter they might then take for figure work ivory black and venetian red it is surprising what an amount of color effect can be got with this simple means and how much can be learned about the relative positions of the warm and cold colors do not attempt the full range of tone at first but keep the darks rather lighter and the lights darker than nature attempt the full scale of tone only when you have acquired sufficient experience with the simpler range and gradually add more colors as you learn to master a few but restraints are not so fashionable just now as unbridled license art students start in with a palette full of the most amazing colors producing results that it were better not to discuss it is a wise man who can discover his limitations and select a medium the capabilities of which just tally with his own to discover this it is advisable to try many and below is a short description of the chief ones used by the draughtsman but very little can be said about them and very little idea of their capacities given in a written description they must be handled by the student and are no doubt capable of many more qualities than have yet been got out of them lead pencil this well-known medium is one of the most beautiful for pure line work and its use is an excellent training to the eye and hand in precision of observation perhaps this is why it has not been so popular in our art schools lately when the charms of severe discipline are not so much in favor as they should be it is the first medium we are given to draw with and as the handiest and most convenient is unrivaled for sketchbook use it is made in a large variety of degrees from the hardest and grayest to the softest and blackest and is too well known to need much description it does not need fixing for pure line drawing nothing equals it except silver point and great draughtsmen like ingress have always loved it it does not lend itself so readily to any form of mass drawing although it is sometimes used for this purpose the offensive shine that occurs if dark masses are introduced is against its use in any but very lightly shaded work its charm is the extreme delicacy of its gray black lines silver and gold point similar to lead pencil and of even greater delicacy is silver point drawing a more ancient method it consists in drawing with a silver point on paper the surface of which has been treated with a faint wash of chinese white without this wash the point will not make a mark for extreme delicacy and purity of line no medium can surpass this method and for the expression of a beautiful line such as a profile nothing could be more suitable than a silver point as a training to the eye and hand also it is of great value as no rubbing out of any sort is possible and eye and hand must work together with great exactness the discipline of silver point drawing is to be recommended as a corrective to the picturesque vagaries of charcoal work a gold point giving a warmer line can also be used in the same way as a silver point the paper first having been treated with chinese white charcoal two extreme points of view from which the rendering of form can be approached have been explained and it has been suggested that students should study them both separately in the first instance as they each have different things to teach of the mediums that are best suited to a drawing combining both points of view the first and most popular is charcoal charcoal is made in many different degrees of hardness and softness the harder varieties being capable of quite a fine point a chisel-shaped point is the most convenient as it does not wear away so quickly and if the broad side of the chisel point is used when a dark mass is wanted the edge can constantly be kept sharp with this edge a very fine line can be drawn charcoal works with great freedom and answers readily when forceful expression is wanted it is much more like painting than any other form of drawing 
a wide piece of charcoal making a wide mark similar to a brush. The delicacy and lightness with which it has to be handled is also much more like the handling of a brush than any other point drawing. When rubbed with the finger, it sheds a soft gray tone over the whole work. With a piece of bread pressed by thumb and finger into a pellet, highlights can be taken out with the precision of white chalk, or rubber can be used. Bread is perhaps the best, as it does not smudge the charcoal but lifts it readily off. When rubbed with the finger, the darks, of course, are lightened in tone. It is therefore useful to draw in the general proportions roughly and rub down in this way. You then have a middle tone over the work, with the rough drawing showing through. Now proceed carefully to draw your lights with bread or rubber, and your shadows with charcoal, in much the same manner as you did in the monochrome exercises already described. All preliminary setting out of your work on canvas is usually done with charcoal, and must, of course, be fixed with a spray diffuser. For larger work, such as a full-length portrait, sticks of charcoal nearly an inch in diameter are made, and a long swinging line can be done without their breaking. For drawings that are intended as things of beauty in themselves, and are not merely done as a preparatory study for a painting, charcoal is perhaps not so refined a medium as a great many others. It is too much like painting to have the particular beauties of a drawing, and too much like drawing to have the qualities of a painting. However, some beautiful things have been done with it. It is useful in doing studies where much finish is desired to fix the work slightly when drawn in and carried some way on. You can work over this again without continually rubbing out with your hand what you have already drawn. If necessary, you can rub out with a hard piece of rubber any parts that have already been fixed or even scrape with a penknife, but this is not advisable for anything but an academic study or working drawings, as it spoils the beauty and freshness of charcoal work. Studies done in this medium can also be finished with Conte chalk. There is also an artificial charcoal put up in sticks that is very good for refined work. It has some advantages over natural charcoal in that there are no knots and it works much more evenly. The best natural charcoal I have used is the French make known as Fusion Roger. It is made in three degrees, number three being the softest and, of course, the blackest. But some of the ordinary Venetian and vine charcoals sold are good. But don't get the cheaper varieties. A bad piece of charcoal is worse than useless. Charcoal is fixed by means of a solution of white shellac dissolved in spirits of wine, blown on with a spray diffuser. This is sold by the artist's colorman, or can easily be made by the student. It lightly deposits a thin film of shellac over the work, acting as a varnish and preventing its rubbing off. Charcoal is not, on the whole, the medium an artist with a pure love of form selects, but rather that of the painter, who uses it when his brushes and paints are not handy. Red chalk, sanguine. A delightful medium that can be used for either pure line work or mixed method of drawing is red chalk. This natural red earth is one of the most ancient materials for drawing. It is a lovely Venetian red in color and works well in the natural state if you get a good piece. It is sold by the ounce, and it is advisable to try the pieces as they vary very much, some being hard and gritty and some more soft and smooth. It is also made by Messrs. Conte of Paris in sticks artificially prepared. These work well and are never gritty, but are not so hard as the natural chalk, and consequently wear away quickly and do not make fine lines as well. Red chalk, when rubbed with the finger or rag, spreads evenly on paper and produces a middle tone on which lights can be drawn with rubber or bread. Sticks of hard, pointed rubber are everywhere sold, which, cut in a chisel shape, work beautifully on red chalk drawings. Bread is also excellent when a softer light is wanted. 
you can continually correct and redraw in this medium by rubbing it with the finger or a rag thus destroying the lights and shadows to a large extent and enabling you to draw them again more carefully for this reason red chalk is greatly to be recommended for making drawings for a picture where much fumbling may be necessary before you find what you want unlike charcoal it hardly needs fixing and much more intimate study of the forms can be got into it most of the drawings by the author reproduced in this book are done in this medium for drawings intended to have a separate existence it is one of the prettiest mediums in fact this is the danger to the student while studying your drawing looks so much at its best that you are apt to be satisfied too soon but for portrait drawings there is no medium to equal it additional quality of dark is occasionally got by mixing a little of this red chalk in a powdered state with water and a very little gum arabic this can be applied with a sable brush as in watercolor painting and makes a rich velvety dark it is necessary to select your paper with some care the ordinary paper has too much size on it this is picked up by the chalk and will prevent its marking a paper with little size is best or old paper where the size has perished i find an o w paper made for printing etchings as good as any for ordinary work it is not perfect but works very well what one wants is the smoothest paper without a faced or hot pressed surface and it is difficult to find occasionally black chalk is used with the red to add strength to it and some draughtsmen use it with the red in such a manner as to produce almost a full color effect holbein who used this medium largely tinted the paper in most of his portrait drawings varying the tint very much and sometimes using zinc white as a wash which enabled him to supplement his work with a silver point line here and there and also got over any difficulty the size in the paper might cause his aim seems to have been to select the few essential things in a head and draw them with great finality and exactness in many of the drawings the earlier work has been done with red or black chalk and then rubbed down and the drawing redone with either a brush and some of the chalk rubbed up with water and gum or a silver point line of great purity while in others he has tinted the paper with watercolor and rubbed this way to the white paper where he wanted a light or chinese white has been used for the same purpose black conte and carbon pencil black conte is a hard black chalk made in small sticks of different degrees it is also put up in cedar pencils rather more gritty than red chalk or charcoal it is a favorite medium with some and can be used with advantage to supplement charcoal when more precision and definition are wanted it has very much the same quality of line and so does not show as a different medium it can be rubbed like charcoal and red chalk and will spread a tone over the paper in very much the same way carbon pencils are similar to conte but smoother in working and do not rub white chalk white chalk is sometimes used on toned paper to draw the lights the paper serving as a half tone while the shadows and outlines are drawn in black or red in this kind of drawing the chalk should never be allowed to come in contact with the black or red chalk of the shadows the half tone of the paper should always be between them for rubbed work white pastel is better than the ordinary white chalk sold for drawing as it is not so hard a drawing done in this method with white pastel and red chalk is reproduced on page forty six and one with the hard white chalk on page two sixty this is the method commonly used for making studies of drapery the extreme rapidity with which the positions of the lights and shadows can be expressed being of great importance when so unstable a subject as an arrangement of drapery is being drawn lithography lithography as a means of artistic reproduction has suffered much in public esteem by being put to all manner of inartistic trade uses it is really one of the most wonderful means of reproducing an artist's actual work 
the result being in most cases so identical with the original that seen together if the original drawing has been done on paper it is almost impossible to distinguish any difference and of course as in etching it is the prints that are really the originals the initial work is only done as a means of reproducing these a drawing is made on a lithographic stone that is a piece of limestone that has been prepared with an almost perfectly smooth surface the chalk used is a special kind of a greasy nature and is made in several degrees of hardness and softness no rubbing out is possible but lines can be scratched out with a knife or parts made lighter by white lines being drawn by a knife over them a great range of freedom and variety is possible in these initial drawings on stone the chalk can be rubbed up with a little water like a cake of watercolor and applied with a brush and every variety of tone can be made with the side of the chalk some care should be taken not to let the warm finger touch the stone or it may make a greasy mark that will print when this initial drawing is done to the artist's satisfaction the most usual method is to treat the stone with a solution of gum arabic and a little nitric acid after this is dry the gum is washed off as far as may be with water some of the gum is left in the porous stone but it is rejected where the greasy lines and tones of the drawing come prints may now be obtained by rolling up the stone with an inked roller the ink is composed of a varnish of boiled linseed oil and any of the lithographic colors to be commercially obtained the ink does not take on the damp gummed stone but only where the lithographic chalk has made a greasy mark so that a perfect facsimile of the drawing on stone is obtained when a sheet of paper is placed on the stone and the whole put through the press the medium deserves to be much more popular with draughtsmen than it is as no more perfect means of reproduction could be devised the lithographic stone is rather a cumbersome thing to handle but the initial drawing can be done on paper and afterwards transferred to the stone in the case of line work the result is practically identical but where much tone and playing about with the chalk is indulged in the stone is much better lithographic papers of different textures are made for this purpose but almost any paper will do providing the drawing is done with the special lithographic chalk pen and ink pen and ink was a favorite means of making studies with many old masters notably rembrandt often heightening the effect with the wash he conveyed marvelous suggestions with the simplest scribbles but it is a difficult medium for the young student to hope to do much with in his studies although for training the eye and hand to quick definite statement of impressions there is much to be said for it no hugging of half-tones is possible things must be reduced to a statement of clear darks which would be a useful corrective to the tendency so many students have of seeing chiefly the half-tones in their work the kind of pen used will depend on the kind of drawing you wish to make in steel pens there are much innumerable varieties from the fine crow quills to the thick j nibs the natural crow quill is a much more sympathetic tool than a steel pen although not quite so certain in its line but more play and variety is to be got out of it and when a free pen drawing is wanted it is preferable reed pens are also made and are useful when thick lines are wanted they sometimes have a steel spring underneath to hold the ink somewhat in the same manner as some fountain pens there is even a glass pen consisting of a sharp pointed cone of glass with grooves running down to the point the ink is held in these grooves and runs down and is deposited freely as the pen is used a line of only one thickness can be drawn with it but this can be drawn in any direction an advantage over most other shapes etching etching is a process of reproduction that consists in drawing with a steel point on a waxed plate of copper or zinc and then putting it in a bath of diluted nitric acid to bite in the lines the longer the plate remains in the bath the deeper and darker the lines become 
so that variety and thickness is got by stopping out with a varnish the light lines when they are sufficiently strong and letting the darker ones have a longer exposure to the acid many wonderful and beautiful things have been done with this simple means the printing consists in inking the plate all over and wiping off until only the lines retain any ink when the plate is put in a press and an impression taken or some slight amount of ink may be left on the plate in certain places where a tint is wanted and a little may be smudged out of the lines themselves to give them a softer quality in fact there are no end of tricks a clever etching printer will adopt to give quality to his print paper the varieties of paper on the market at the service of the artist are innumerable and nothing need be said here except that the texture of your paper will have a considerable influence on your drawing but try every sort of paper so as to find what suits the particular things you want to express I make a point of buying every new paper I see, and a new paper is often a stimulant to some new quality in drawing. Avoid the wood pulp papers, as they turn dark after a time. Linen rag is the only safe substance for good papers, and artists now have in the O.W. papers a large series that they can rely on being made of linen only. It is sometimes advisable when you are not drawing a subject that demands a clear hard line but where more sympathetic qualities are wanted to have a wad of several sheets of paper under the one you are working on pinned on the drawing board this gives you a more sympathetic surface to work upon and improves the quality of your work in redrawing a study with which you are not quite satisfied it is a good plan to use a thin paper pinning it over the first study so that it can be seen through one can by this means start as it were from the point where one left off good papers of this description are now on the market i fancy they are called bank note end of chapter twenty chapter twenty one of the practice and science of drawing this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mahima Sarda, Mumbai, India. The Practice and Science of Drawing by Harold Speed. Conclusion mechanical invention mechanical knowledge and even a mechanical theory of the universe have so influenced the average modern mind that it has been thought necessary in the foregoing pages to speak out strongly against the idea of a mechanical standard of accuracy in artistic drawing if there were such a standard the photographic camera would serve our purpose well enough and considering how largely this idea is held one need not be surprised that some painters use the camera indeed the wonder is that they do not use it more as it gives in some perfection the mechanical accuracy which is all they seem to aim at in their work there may be times when the camera can be of use to artists but only to those who are thoroughly competent to do without it to those who can look as it were through the photograph and draw from it with the same freedom and spontaneity with which they would draw from nature, thus avoiding its dead mechanical accuracy, which is a very difficult thing to do. But the camera is a convenience to be avoided by the student. Now, although it has been necessary to insist strongly on the difference between phenomena mechanically recorded and the records of a living individual consciousness i should be very sorry if anything said 
should lead students to assume that a loose and careless manner of study was in any way advocated. The training of his eye and hand to the most painstaking accuracy of observation and record must be the student's aim for many years. The variations on mechanical accuracy in the work of a fine draughtsman need not be and seldom are conscious variations. Mechanical accuracy is a much easier thing to accomplish than accuracy to the subtle perceptions of the artist. And he who cannot draw with great precision the ordinary cold aspect of things cannot hope to catch the fleeting aspect of his finer vision. Those artists who can only draw in some weird fashion remote from nature may produce a work of some interest, but they are too much at the mercy of a natural trick of hand to hope to be more than interesting curiosities in art. The object of your training in drawing should be to develop to the uttermost the observation of form and all that it signifies and your powers of accurately portraying this on paper. Unflinching honesty must be observed in all your studies. It is only then that the you in you will eventually find expression in your work. And it is this personal quality, this recording of the impressions of life as felt by a conscious individual that is the very essence of distinction in art. The seeking after originality so much advocated would be better put seeking for sincerity. Seeking for originality usually resolves itself into running after any peculiarity in manner that the changing fashions of a restless age may throw up. One of the most original men who ever lived did not trouble to invent the plots of more than three or four of his plays, but was content to take the hackneyed work of his time as the vehicle through which to pour the rich treasures of his vision of life, and wrote, What custom wills in all things do you do it? Individual style will come to you naturally as you become more conscious of what it is you wish to express. There are two kinds of insincerity in style the employment of a ready-made conventional manner that is not understood and that does not fit the matter and the running after and laboriously seeking an original manner when no original matter exists. Good style depends on a clear idea of what it is you wish to do. It is the shortest means to the end aimed at, the most apt manner of conveying that personal something that is in all good work. The style is the man, as Flaubert says. The splendor and value of your style will depend on the splendor and value of the mental vision inspired in you that you seek to convey on the quality of the man, in other words. And this is not a matter where direct teaching can help you, but rests between your own consciousness and those higher powers that move it. End of conclusion. Recording by Mahima Sarda, Mumbai, India. End of The Practice and Science of Drawing by Harol Speed. Appendix of The Practice and Science of Drawing. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. 
Recording by Abai in February 2018. The Practice and Science of Drawing by Harold Speed. Appendix. If you add a line of 5 inches to one of 8 inches, you produce one 13 inches long, and if you proceed by always adding the last two, you arrive at a series of lengths 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55 inches, etc. Mr. William Schooling tells me that any two of these lines adjoining one another are practically in the same proportion to each other, that is to say, one 8 inches is 1.600 times the size of one 5 inches, and a 13 inch line is 1.625 the size of the 8 inch, and the 21 inch line being 1.615 times the 13 inch line, and so on. With the mathematician's love of accuracy, Mr. Schooling has worked out the exact proportion that should exist between a series of quantities for them to be in the same proportion to their neighbors, and in which any two added together would produce the next. There is only one proportion that will do this, and although very formidable, stated exactly, for practical purposes, it is that between five and a fraction over eight. Stated accurately to eleven places of decimals, it is one plus the square root of five divided by two is equal to one point six one eight zero three three nine eight eight seven five nearly we have evidently here a very unique proportion mr schooling has called this the phi proportion and it will be convenient to refer to it by this name testing this proportion on the reproductions of pictures in this book in the order of their appearing we find the following remarkable results los menias velasquez page 60 the right-hand side of light opening of door at the end of the room is exactly phi proportion with the two sides of picture, and further, the bottom of this opening is exactly phi proportion with the top and bottom of canvas. It will be noticed that this is a very important point in the placing of the composition. Fête Champêtre, Giorgione, page 151 lower end of flute held by seated female figure exactly phi proportion with sides of picture and lower side of hand holding it a point slightly above the end of flute exactly phi proportion with top and bottom of canvas this is also an important center in the construction of the composition bacchus and ariadne titian page 154 the proportion in this picture both with top and bottom and sides of canvas comes in the shadow under chin of Bacchus, the most important point in the composition being the placing of his head. Love and Death by Watts, page 158. Point from which drapery radiates on figure of death exactly phi proportion with top and bottom of picture point where right hand side of right leg of love cuts dark edge of steps exactly phi proportion with sides of picture surrender of breda by velasquez page 161 first spear in upright row on the right top of picture exactly phi proportion with sides of canvas height of gun carried horizontally by man in middle distance above central group exactly phi proportion with top and bottom of picture this line gives height of group of figures on left and is the most important horizontal line in the picture birth of venus botticelli page 166 height of horizon line phi proportion with top and bottom of picture height of shell on which venus stands phi proportion with top and bottom of picture the smaller quantity being below this time Laterally, the extreme edge of dark drapery held by figure on right that blows towards Venus is phi proportion with sides of picture. The Rape of Europa by Paolo Veronese, page 168. 
top of head of Europa exactly phi proportion with top and bottom of picture. Right hand side of same head slightly to left of phi proportion with sides of picture, unless in the reproduction a part of the picture on the left has been trimmed away, as is likely, in which case it would be exactly phi proportion. I have taken the first seven pictures reproduced in this book that were not selected with any idea of illustrating this point, and I think you will admit that in each some very important quantity has been placed in this proportion. One could go on through all the illustrations were it not for the fear of becoming wearisome, and also one could go on through some of the minor relationships and point out how often this proportion turns up in compositions. But enough has been said to show that the eye evidently takes some especial pleasure in it, whatever may eventually be found to be the physiological reason underlying it. End of Appendix End of the Practice and Science of Drawing by Harold Speed